All right, guys, good morning. It is time for day three safeties. Just a couple of videos about some of the intriguing late round safeties of the 2023 NFL Draft. Uh, we're going to start with Rashad Torrance II of the Florida Gators. Young, 21 years old, decent size, 6 feet flat, 193 pounds, 32-inch arms, 3-inch hands, so he's got the size stuff on lockdown. But unfortunately, he sacrifices that decent size with his speed. 4, 7, 2, 40, 1, 5, 9, 10 yard split. That's not even really doing it as a linebacker, much less a safety. Uh, jumps were half decent, I guess. 20 BP is nice for a safety, but uh, going to be hard to overcome that speed. A lot of the big boards have him actually going undrafted because of that. Some have him in like the 6th. The aggregate currently has him in the 6th round. Um, the He only has one season of production at Florida. He had 84 tackles and one pass defense last year. 76 PFF grade in coverage, pretty good. But uh, yeah, not a lot to go on here. And the little bit we have is very mixed. Uh, he was used versatile in college. He lined up as a deep safety, a strong safety. Uh, I think a little bit as a uh, slot corner as well. But again, you look at the testing and you're like, there's no way all of that is gonna work. He's good at diagnosing plays from deep zone and acting on his read. He can do the stuff where he's the last line of defense pretty well. Um, not a lot of plays on the ball, though, despite that. So he puts himself in the area of the play, but then he doesn't necessarily make the play, it feels like. Um, he's a pretty good tackler as well. He can affect the entire field with his range. He's able to go sideline to sideline. He tracks the ball well when it's in the air. Um, he is a little bit... You'd like him to have like another 10 pounds on him if he's actually going to work in the box, if that's really how he's going to be used. He didn't test well. Short area quickness and change of direction doesn't really hold up in coverage, so man coverage is going to be hard for him. His transitions are bad, which means he's going to get beat vertically. And he's had injuries in his college career already, so probably going to have durability issues. So... Uh, he could be like Quandre Diggs. He could be like Quandre Diggs, I guess. He could be a good deep safety who doesn't really bring that much else good to the table. Um, sixth round? Yeah, sure, I got no problem with it. But before the sixth round, there's just no upside here. Like, how's this guy ever going to... Like, like he's not going to ever be the Quandre Diggs who made the Pro Bowl a couple times in a row, right? Hard for me to believe that. Tough for me to buy it. So, Rashad Torrance the second. In the sixth round, I got no problem with it because he does have some positive traits. But this is a guy who kind of has only good in college plastered on the front of his jersey. Next up, we have Brandon Joseph of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Uh, this was a guy who was a great ball hawk where he started in college, which I believe was Northwestern. And that kind of dried up a little bit the last couple years, but still an impressive player. Six feet tall, 202 pounds, 30 and 7 8 inch arms, 9 inch hands. Tested okay-ish, didn't jump very well, but uh, he did have a respectable 10-yard uh, split at least, I guess. 17 bench press reps. For this area of the draft, it's okay testing, I think. Um, most of the big boards have him in day three, the fifth or sixth. A couple actually had him in the third, but the aggregate has him in the fifth. Um, he actually saw much reduced production in 2022. In 10 games, he had 30 tackles and one interception, one pass defensed. Good coverage grade, but reduced production compared to the previous year when he gave you almost 80 tackles and three interceptions. So kind of a regression there, I guess you could call it. Um, he should be really good as a deep safety with his ball hawk skills. He showed great ball hawk skills when he was younger, first couple years in college at Northwestern. Uh, he's got great instincts to read where the play is going and then act on his read. He's really good at that kind of stuff. Can play back, read the play, and then go make the play. Um, should be able to come up closer to the line and work in coverage on like tight ends and slot receivers a little bit. Um, <clears throat> he's got good hips when he flips the hips when he's uh, transitioning. It's great. He's got a very smooth transition. He's a violent tackler. He understands offense, understands route combinations, understands where to put himself to make a play. So that stuff's really good. But I don't think he's ever going to be great when he's asked to be a box safety. If you ask him to play closer to the line, it's not going to be a great result. Doesn't take great angles and run support. Not somebody who's going to ever be some great box safety. Um, it is kind of weird that he regressed when he transferred to Notre Dame after being a great ball hawk at Northwestern. 
And I think that while he's not a bad tackler, he needs to become more technically sound. Right now he's violent, but I feel like he leaves some tackles on the table because he just, he, he, he sells out a little too hard. You have to be fundamentally sound as well. So I like him, but I don't think he's going to work in the Fangio defense that well. Um, he would be a really sensible heir apparent to uh, Quandre Diggs. I think that if he replaced uh, Quandre Diggs as a true deep safety, that would make sense. But right now, that is not really what we're looking for. So I can't justify it until we get to the fifth round. If we were running the old Carroll defense, I would probably say fourth. So, hey, if we're planning on transitioning back to that defense, I'd probably say round four is okay. But as of right now, I'm saying round five for Brandon Joseph. And I'm going to keep my eye on him nevertheless once we get to round four just because of that possibility. Okay, Ronnie Hickman of Ohio State. Another young guy, 21 years old. Decent size, six, and a half, six feet and a half inch. 203 pounds, 33 inch arms, nice length. Nine and three eighth inch hands. A couple, of one, well, excuse me, one big board actually has him right around the uh, bottom of the third. Most have him in the fourth. The aggregate actually has him in the fifth. So, somewhere around there. Really, really productive as a tackler in 2021. He gave you 99 tackles in 13 games, including two picks. Now, last year, his tackles got almost cut in half. Kind of weird, right? But uh, still made a lot of plays on the ball. Seven passes defensed and an excellent coverage grade. 89. So, Ronnie Hickman knows for the football. Always finds himself around the football. Big reason why he had so many tackles in 2021. He's good covering tight ends as well. That's going to be part of his positive skill set for sure. He's going to be great in the box. He's got great skills to be a box safety. He's a good tackler. I think he'll be really good coming up as an extra linebacker, coming up in run support. His short area quickness is pretty standout. I think he'll be really good in most man coverage situations, honestly. You can put him up against a receiver in man coverage, and I think that he will be able to do it. So, <coughs> clear appeal in that regard. His ball skills are forgettable. He has three interceptions over the last two years and seven passes defense last year. He actually was credited with none the previous year except for the interceptions. Um, kind of hard to do that. Be a safety for 13 games, have 100 tackles and zero passes defense. He's already been hurt a few times in his career. He's probably best as a box safety. I don't think his uh, coverage metrics will hold up that well if he's asked to do it in an NFL capacity. And I think he could become a great tackler. I'm, I'm not going to say it's an issue, really, but his fundamentals on his tackling could get better. And again, that is a thing that when you get to the NFL can come back and bite you in a way that didn't bite you when you were in college. Ohio State plays most of their games against weak competition that is not going to be able to punish him when he makes mistakes tackling, but NFL players will. So I do like his man coverage abilities, I do like the fact that he's fairly well-rounded as a prospect, but there's nothing over the top with Ronnie Hickman. I'd say fifth round. Fifth round sounds about right to me. I'd reach on him a little bit more than what the aggregate says, but only a little bit. Um, there's no, I don't see much star potential here personally. I'm not feeling that, but I do think he could be a very quality piece in a Fangio defense. I think he makes sense. His youth is also exciting. It means he has room to get a lot better. So Ronnie Hickman would be somebody that I would be jump all over in the fifth round. Before then, though, I just feel like you can do a little bit better. Last guy for this video is going to be trading the third, another Florida safety. We started with a Florida safety. We're going to end with one. Uh, 23 years old, 6'2", 200 pounds, 31 and 3 quarters inch arms, 9 and a quarter inch hands. Tested um, really slowly. This guy moves very slowly for even a late round safety. One six ten yard split. That was about what Will Anderson's ten yard split was. But he did show explosiveness with his jumps. These are pretty good jump scores, and he cranked out twenty five bench press reps. Very respectable. Um, most of the big boards I use have him in like the seventh, but a couple have him higher, which bump him up to the sixth round of the aggregate. Over the last two years, he's given you 25 games. He's given you about 170 tackles. Eight and a half for a loss. So decent number of plays made in the backfield here for a safety. A sack and a half 
Only one interception, though, 12 passes defensed. Coverage grade was mediocre last year. Florida not exactly having a great season overall, for whatever that's worth. So, the interesting thing about Trey Dean is that he's tall enough to possibly be able to play outside cornerback. Like, most of the time when you're talking about a safety, you're like, okay, can they play some nickel corner? This guy might be able to play outside corner. He did it a little bit at Florida, I believe. Maybe he can do it at the pro level. And also, he's big enough to maybe be a little bit of a linebacker on some downs. So, versatility is the name of the game. He's big and strong and explosive. <clears throat> he's strong in run support. He's going to come up and hit hard. He's going to take pretty good angles, I think. <clears throat> um, he He's going to be somebody who you bring up as like an extra linebacker in the box. And he's going to play that role really well. He transitions well in coverage. He flips the hips well. He mirrors receivers well in man coverage. So, likable. Unfortunately, when I look at his testing, I wonder how the heck is this guy going to keep up in man coverage when he's this slow and this slow to accelerate. Like, he does have explosiveness. We like that. That could help. But he's slow. How is he going to keep up with the receivers? And sometimes he loses technique and discipline. He's got some stuff to learn in that area as well. In the old Carroll defense, I would like him as a uh, box safety. But... I I don't know if it's going to work in this defense where we need more versatility. There is something to be said about a safety this big who moves fluidly enough to hang in man coverage situations, but he may not be able to hang in those man coverage situations because of the speed. Like, obviously Florida isn't playing terrible competition, but uh, it's going to be a big upgrade to the NFL. I'd bite on him in the fifth round, though. There is a little bit of intriguing stuff here that I like. I just don't like it enough to invest on it before the fifth round. I, I, I think that's probably pretty fair, all things considered. All right, that's it for this video. See you guys later. One more safety video. See you guys soon. Go Hawks.